Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Testy Tuesday. Did I say morning? Actually, it's afternoon. Yeah, we had some doctor appointments this morning. So it is afternoon now, but it's still Testy Tuesday, and we're going to test your incredible knowledge of the Bible. And uh, I know you're probably expecting me to say, which prophet said this? And then you're going to answer Isaiah, and you're going to be right, because our question does come from the prophet Isaiah, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 4. Do not look it up yet. Cheaters. Hey, you know, you can't do that. Wait till we, wait till we get to the Testy Tuesday question to see if you know the answer. Now, I'm going to start reading the text. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of... The land of what? Oh, you have to tell me what the land was called. Was it the land of Zebulun and Naphtali? Was it the land of Asher and Manasseh? Was it the land of Judah and Syria? Or was it the land of Gasport and Buffalo? Yeah, let's go Buffalo. Yeah, if you're a Bills fan. So just eliminate that last one. You know, that's a that's a gimme that it's not the right answer. But let's do those uh, pairings again. Is it the land of Zebulun and Naphtali? The land of Asher and Manasseh? The land of Judah and Syria? Or do, Yeah, we're not doing Gasport and Buffalo. Okay, the correct answer. I'm going to read it again. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Okay, so what's going on with this passage? Well, if you recall, we had a little talk about the Revised Common Lectionary and how it's put together, and it's based primarily on the Gospels. And what you do is, as you have a section of Gospel, the commentators and all those who worked on this got together and looked back into the Older Testament and tried to find a passage that fit for this, and they found it all right because... As you'll see on Friday, when we have our first thoughts on a Friday, there was mention of the lands of Zebulun and Naphtali. In fact, this very passage was quoted by Matthew as a fulfillment of prophecy of Jesus because it's out of these lands and in these lands that Jesus starts his ministry. Yeah, so it's it's kind of cool. But what about Zebulun and Naphtali, um, what's going on here? Why were these people dwelling in darkness? What was so bad about that? Why did God kind of give up on them? Well, they weren't putting their faith and trust in God, and they got a little bit um, beat up. <clears throat> and, uh, and along with two other northern tribes, now remember, Israel and Judah had separated at that point. It was no longer a united kingdom. It was divided. And there were ten tribes to the north. <clears throat> and two of the original tribes lived in the south, in Judah. Now, there were four of these northern tribes that kind of got beaten up. And they got beaten up badly. And they, were, they weren't all that powerful. And Assyria just kind of did them in. So, uh, that's what was going on there. But... But there was an announcement that, hey, that's over with now. And, and God's doing a, a new thing here. And the people are going to, to see their salvation come by. And oh, we, we see it, says the prophet. <clears throat> it's coming in a new king. And all that time of darkness, light upon you is going to shine. And... What comes after, you have to read the rest of chapter 9, at least the first part of it. There you see that um, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and all the different names, Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. There's all different titles that are given to this new ruler. 
Now, what's significant about that in the New Testament is that Matthew reaches out and grabs this passage as a, I don't want to use the word proof text, but it's, he, he, what he's saying is this is the one they're talking about. This Jesus that you see going out there now and, uh, and, and preaching the good news of the kingdom, he's the one that fulfills this prophecy by Isaiah. So, yep, Zebulun and Naphtali, very, very, you know, well, there's not any other way to put it other than they were two of the most insignificant of all the ten tribes of, of Israel, uh, of all the twelve tribes altogether, very insignificant. However, however, they are the ones that are spelled out as seeing the light. And isn't that what we are called to do as well? To see the light, put our trust in God, even when things aren't going well, even when we have messed up as the people of these tribes did and got mixed up in wrong alliances, alliances that, that went sour. And, uh, well, the same thing's going to happen to Judah in the south, unfortunately, and that's going to be revealed in the prophecies of Isaiah as well. But just hang in there, put your faith, hope, and trust in God, and he's going to come to you in the midst of your darkest moments, in the midst of your darkness. There will be light. Well, you know, yesterday I sat in this exact same spot, and the sun was shining so brightly, brightly in my face, I had to keep my uh, ball cap on just to... Uh, just to be able to look straight ahead. And now, yeah, I, I have to wear that same cap, but to keep the raindrops from falling on my head. God's blessings be with you. I do have a visitor coming up here, uh, probably saying, hey, come check the eggs. It just got laid out in one of the coops. Blessings be with you and have an awesome day.